it's really about. Okay, that was great. That's, that's exactly the sort of answer I wish I had had a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, all right, so Steve, do you want to, um, do you have any more questions? And then maybe after you've asked a question or two, we can uh, open it up to, to anyone else who has questions. Sure. Um, so Kim, it's it's summer, which means we're all just stacked up with free time, right? Um, so so what should we uh, what should we be putting on our summer reading list? And I put reading in big quotes here. I, I'm really asking what's something you think uh, every s computer scientist should uh, should take the chance to read, to learn, to do, to play with, uh, to build something with, or whatever. Hmm. Gosh, well, my reading list is hugely varied. <laughs> you can see a little bit, I think, behind me some of the books that I have here. And they run the gamut from, you know, neuroscience to philosophy to, you know, the art of games. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff there. Um, I think that actually, I don't know. I think that I would suggest that you should get out there and you should make a game. So what does that mean exactly? Well, uh, I... I happen to firmly believe that even if you have zero aspirations of entering into the game industry, the nature of the challenges you are faced when you are putting together a game will serve you in every other field you could apply your programming skills. So it is definitely a worthwhile exercise. So I don't say that tongue-in-cheek or in some sort of backhanded way to try to get everybody to become game programmers. Uh, I really do think it has huge value. So, you know, a great summer reading task uh, might be reading up on Unity, for example, which is the current dominant engine in the game development world. And having a little bit of that under your belt, if you are aspiring toward the industry, will only help you. But it's a great exercise. It shows you a different way of of programming. It provides... It's not... Uh, it's... Um, uh, what's the phrase, component-based program, programming, sorry, as opposed to traditional object-oriented programming. So it provides a little bit of, of some situational kind of, some context, if you will, for why we program in certain ways and why you might not always want to do object-oriented, uh, you know, or sometimes why you might. I mean, there are times when I wish there were different ways of doing things um, in, in the ways that I'm developing things for games and sometimes are, are available. But it's, it's just, it's such good knowledge for you. Uh, it's a great prototyping tool as well. So I was just talking about how hard it is to facilitate rapid prototyping in the classroom environment. But if our students were using tools like Unity, I mean, that doesn't need to be the exclusive uh, tool of education, but I, I do think it is, it is good, uh, that would provide an opportunity for us to set up different kinds of activities later on in, in the program. You know, if you, if you teach, for example, Unity in first or second year, or you have a Unity club, or you have some means by which students can can learn this, even if it's opt-in, that provides a lot of opportunities later on for students to do more advanced things, to actually start playing around with prototyping, and frees them to be able to prototype some things on their own time without quite as much overhead as you might face if you were doing everything from, from scratch. 